I tried running smart shopping campaigns while testing brand new products for not one, not two, but three different Shopify stores. And here are the exact results that I got. Now, before I actually even get into showing you the actual results I got with these three Shopify stores, I want to kind of explain why it's such an interesting thing as to why I even tried this and why I'm even making a video on this. Because if you have been following me for even the smallest amount of time, you know how against I was to just launching smart shopping campaigns for brand new products and i had a special strategy and special ideology behind testing products in a certain way so this completely went against my own strategies and the reason behind why this is such an interesting thing is because i always used to claim that launching with standard shopping campaigns with certain bids was the ideal way to test different products out simply because that google ads account whatever account you were testing out different products on did not have the amount amount of data are needed for those products to become actual winning products. So as a result, it would not really be ideal for you to just go out and tell Google to find the right audience for you when in reality that Google Ads account had little to no information about any types of previous products or even the current products. But these three Shopify stores, which I have been testing this strategy out of just launching smart shopping campaigns on basically brand new stores or just stores which don't have too much data have shown me that it is completely possible for you to get not only only good results but consistent long-term results with this strategy so let's start off with store number one this is store number one right over here as we can see we're looking at specifically three different campaigns here this top campaign is a branded search campaign these bottom two are just smart shopping campaigns and I want to go back in time just a little bit to show you exactly when this strategy was launched and since when I have been testing this so this is actually a client's e-commerce brand under my agency your marketing more on that later but this client was running ads previously prior to many many months before this when we started this strategy out and we actually started working with this client in the months of March so since March I have directly been testing smart shopping campaigns there have been no other campaign types which I have been testing during this time period the actual owner did actually try different strategies out since January but there was only about two months worth of data for this account before we actually came in and we actually launched those smart shopping campaigns as you can see during that time period before we actually came in there were a lot of other campaigns running some of them were general testing campaigns just following my same exact strategy because this e-commerce store owner was actually a youtuber who went out on my website yourmarketing.com and decided to book a call to get additional help with their ad account because during this time period the results were not necessarily where they wanted them to be so as you can see the general testing campaign was running during that time and if we look at the overview we can see that it actually fully stopped running during the months of april which is when we were fully launching the brand new strategy which we were coming up with the month of march basically the end of march is when we started and the first month of april was when we were just kind of figuring out what to do with this account and what kind of strategy to implement it until that time the general testing campaign was running but as you can see if we go ahead and add a column for to just look at the row as we can see exactly what the overall results were so we're going to add conversions and we're going to add the conversion value over cost column which is this one right over here so once we add that we will be able to see what the results were and by the way this currency is a different currency because the owner does live in a european country however the brand runs within the us so overall the conversion value over cost not really that impressive just a 2.25 so let's go back now to the all campaign section so since april is basically when we started running campaigns for this account and the only campaigns which we were really running were those smart shopping campaigns and as you can see, the reason why these campaigns are only testing campaigns is because there was a little bit of data on this account. And if we go back one more time to just look at how much data this account actually had. So from January 1st, all the way to the end of March, so March 31st, we can see overall this account had spent about 15,000 USD to get around 826 sales. So there were decent amount of results here, but this strategy is not something I would have done even then, which was just to launch smart shopping campaigns for everything on the store. So now that we went over the previous data, let's look at the current campaigns a bit more to understand what I did. So this first campaign right here is actually called the general testing campaign. As you can see, so far in this month only it has about 92 sales but if we look at all time for this specific campaign 103 sales only and the overall ROAS if we go in and look at the ROAS column it's a 2.31 so 
much much better than what the original campaign was getting and it's a full-on testing campaign and if we look at just the last 30 days worth of data and change this to look at the daily time period we can see that in the recent time period it has been very very consistent and actually been increasing so there was a time period when it was at a 6.28 and of course there's ups and downs not too crazy but again 4.56 and then here 0.42 again ups and downs and this attribution is not fully attributed so there are more sales that should be shown here later on down the line but overall the campaign is getting much much smarter and this is again a hundred percent testing these products literally were not tested before on this account because right when i came in the store owner decided to add some brand new product so that's one campaign right there but the second smart shopping campaign this is now the winner smart shopping campaign and i'm going to be explaining in this video the exact strategy which i trot out for basically all of these brands which i'll be showing over but these are the basic results and then the third campaign of course a branded search campaign nothing too crazy it's the basic two one campaign strategy launch i always do for majority of the e-commerce stores let's move on now to the next account which we'll be looking at and this is actually a fashion niche store running fully on smart shopping campaigns now this store actually had a lot of data before we actually came in we came in late october of 2021 but before that even let's look at one year's time period this uh, store was getting decent amount of sales which in this all we can see that there were sales but the overall conversion value over cost very very poor as you can see 0 0.62 0 0.61 the store owner was struggling tremendously and they were running a lot of standard shopping campaigns so i came in late october early november and that's when i decided to just basically wipe out all of the standard shopping campaigns and again i'm going to be going over why i did this but as you can see the row started to increase tremendously and these are actually positive results for the client right over here the owner before was running at a full-on loss unfortunate but that is the case that was going on here smart shopping campaigns turned it into a profitable store the break-even row here is a 1.75 so it's very very profitable but majority of what i did is basically just come in and change everything to smart shopping campaigns as you can see right here there's a different amounts of campaigns running here but overall about 99 percent of those are smart shopping in fact the only reason why we have different shopping campaigns running is because now we scale these campaigns to different countries like australia canada new zealand united kingdom etc but overall just a smart shopping campaign route moving on to the third and final example i have for you guys another store which basically i started working with last october and it was kind of like a brand new store but it was not brand new in the sense that it was getting a lot of results from facebook ads it had done over a million dollars before the owner came to us under my agency or marketing and it was when we started working which was in october but then i launched smart shopping campaigns directly i did not actually try any standard shopping campaign so here as you can see this campaign here which is at point number two is a smart shopping this one right here is actually a performance max campaign which was recently launched however overall still smart shopping was what this account was responding to the best and if we go back to the all campaign section and look at the next campaign which is this one right here at well, step number one this was a full-on smart shopping campaign still running to this day and all of these campaigns were full-on smart shopping but as you can see the results $42,000 spent in October for $468,000. That's over a 10x ROAS. Absolutely insane numbers, but these are entirely possible. And the only reason why I found out is because for the past few months, this is the exact strategy that I've been implementing. Now, before we actually dive a bit deeper into the exact strategy I implemented for all of these brands, and the initial strategy was the same for all of these, let's take a step back to understand what I used to always recommend. Because if you are currently using this strategy, which I used to recommend, it might be ideal for you to kind of switch over to this new strategy of using smart shopping campaigns, especially after what I found out through this kind of test that I did with these three ad accounts. So the original strategy, which I used to always recommend for e-commerce brands was to go the general testing campaign route the two campaign launch strategy which was one high bid campaign and one low bid campaign the main reason why i should recommend this was because brand new accounts had little to no data and kind of giving google an idea as to what you want the bids to be for your product what you think the ideal bid should be was the best way to go however the main reason why we kind of changed it to this brand new strategy was because number one google was starting to push more and more smart shopping campaigns 
more and more performance max campaigns. I mean, there's a reason why smart shopping campaigns and even standard shopping are basically about to get fully wiped out and only performance max campaigns will be available from now on. That's because Google wants you to start implementing them more and more. It wants you to kind of give up your own control. So Google, which is of course much, much smarter than you as an advertiser can determine what the ideal bids are, what the ideal strategies, etc. But another reason why I tried this strategy was because number two, the profit margins for these stores. Now this doesn't apply to all of these stores because some of these stores actually had very basic profit margins, like an average drop shipper, but some had very, very high price points and high profit margins. For example, one of these, the store that did over a 10x row has had average sale prices of two thousand five thousand even ten thousand dollars which is why it didn't really make sense to just go the standard shopping route but for the other stores profit margin was really not the main reason why i decided to do that the next reason was the amount of data now as i always say you need to have a good amount of data before you decide to just head deep into smart shopping campaigns and a lot of these stores had that amount of data as you saw this store right here on my screen had over 800 conversions before i decided to actually go full in onto smart shopping campaigns of course without any kind of data this might not have really worked out that well which is why i still think to this day if you have zero dollars worth of data on a google ads account it makes sense to go the standard shopping route however if you're watching this video after when there's no standard shopping or smart shopping available anymore that's when you might want to start getting that data initially by just a normal search campaign preferably like a branded search campaign or a retargeting campaign so at least the google ads account can get a little bit warmed up before you decide to do anything else with those campaign strategy but besides data another reason why i decided to start smart shopping campaigns for some of these accounts was because of the number of products listen if you have 50,000 100,000 products on your store you should not be doing manual CPC or standard shopping campaign in any way shape or form that's simply because there's too much products on your store for you to go one by one through the store determining what your bid should be what kind of product should be in a specific campaign etc it's just a lot of unnecessary time wasted a lot of unnecessary budget wasted and human power wasted as well you would rather let google take care of that for you because that's what google was designed to do and that's why google is so smart you want to let google take care of these things especially if your inventory and your SKU number is very very high but one of these four reasons is the main reason why you should be trying out smart shopping if you're just brand new again best way to go about this is just a standard shopping campaign or a search campaign or maybe a retargeting campaign first to get a decent amount of data and then go about with a performance max directly or a smart shopping campaign but that brings me to the actual strategy of as to what i did with these three different ad accounts which i was handling and by the way all three were in completely different niches however i still tried the basic strategy of smart shopping campaigns a certain way and i'm glad i tried this strategy out because it ended up getting a lot of fruitful results and my clients are all happy but if you want to get these kinds of results for your e-commerce brand as well and you're doing thirty thousand or more per month in sales go on to my website at yoromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how i can possibly work with you to help you get results like these but moving back now to the actual strategy i always keep two things in mind whenever i launch this smart shopping campaign strategy and that is what do i want to do in terms of testing and what do i want to do in terms of scaling if the answer is smart shopping for both then here's exactly what i do which is what i did for this account right here i launched one campaign which was a general testing campaign with a smart shopping campaign route if we go inside the campaign and look at the settings there was nothing crazy i did within this actual campaign type so what i did is i just launched everything for one country only united states i did the bidding maximize conversion value but if you look at the target ROAS percentage right here, you will see a specific number. And this number was actually a very, very random number recommended to us by Google itself. When I started this campaign, I actually had this box fully unchecked. And the reason for that was because there was little to no data and I was not sure what the target ROAS percentage should be because this account previously was kind of getting very varied results in terms of testing. So I had no choice but to just start without this box checked. And later on, after about seven to 14 days, I found out that Google is actually recommending around a 244% target ROAS percentage. So what I did is I just went with Google's recommendation, which is not something I often do, and just ended up choosing that target ROAS percentage only for this 
testing campaign because it is again a testing campaign you do not want to go too crazy with your target ROAS because there's a very good chance it might end up spending too much money if the winning product within this ends up dying out and that could happen because of the next strategy which we implement within the account which is launching another smart shopping campaign for winning products which is what i did for this account as well initially as i already said before i even came into this account there were already a few products which were getting a few sales so what i did excluded them from this general testing campaign and only including them within the smart shopping campaign which was for winning products only and if we go inside the settings section we can see that there is no target ROAS box checked for this winning products campaign and that's because i do not want to limit the amount of results my campaign can get when it comes to winning products so alone, I didn't necessarily do anything in terms of the target ROAS, but of course the results can be fully varied. As you can see for the last 30 days, this winning products campaign got a 1.67 ROAS. But if we look at, you know, for example, last seven days, it's at a 1.69, but the testing campaign ROAS is actually increasing. And if we look at um, this last 14 days in total, we can see that the ROAS for the smart shopping was actually uh, 1.43 for the winner smart shopping at least. So the ROAS for that is actually increasing and the general testing campaign is kind of evening out. So one thing I want to also clarify is these numbers are not fully accurate due to certain conversion tracking issues and overall data attribution delays this account is getting. But that is what I always do for all of these accounts, even for this account right over here. The first campaign which we launched, it was an all products testing campaign, as you can see. And this was the full on general testing campaign, but it was only a smart shopping campaign. And the target ROAS box was actually unchecked in this case because the price points were so high. I did not want to limit the growth here at all. And the second campaign, which was called the converting campaign for all winning products, also a smart shopping campaign in this case didn't spend as much money but it was only for winning products the same strategy that i implemented on the account i was just showing you for previously and this third account same strategy but overall we kind of expanded that out to more different campaigns and more different countries simply because this store owner had the ability to ship to these different countries and we can see that the results are overall very very varied so if we just look at this month's worth of results we can see there's a branded search campaign 73x row as this one 35x row as two different countries this one actually a campaign for new zealand 4x row as this one also new zealand 2.63x row as and then of course the overall results for the other campaigns are going to vary it's going to all depend on what day it is how the overall economy is etc but it does go up and down our main goal is to always make sure this is above 1.75 but of course it can dip sometimes as you can see it did dip here so the main strategy then becomes should we kind of lower the budget or should we do other things and in the last 14 days this campaign has been performing not too bad which is why no further action has been taken but that was pretty much the overall strategy as to what we did in terms of launching the campaigns and basically scaling it further i always like to have both of these things in mind which is testing and then scaling if there's already winning products then i definitely go with one general testing campaign and one winning products campaign and I exclude the winners from the general testing campaign but if there's no winning products then i might just go ahead and launch one general testing campaign which is a smart shopping and then kind of within 7 to 14 days have that second winning product campaign launch but just launching them is one part of the strategy what do you do after you have launched them how do you kind of optimize them further so optimization is the very simple strategy it's always basically what i say in my other youtube videos i even recently released a video on optimization which you can watch on my channel but when it comes to optimization i'm always looking at the number one metric which is cost per conversion and then number two the overall ROAS so if you are in a niche then it should be very easy for you to determine if you're not in a niche then it might be a bit difficult for you and I don't really recommend just launching one general testing campaign that is a smart shopping for a general store but you should rather be launching it based on collections profit margins etc but this one is in a specific niche so what I do is I look at the overall ROAS and I have a general idea of whether this ROAS is profitable or not of course this is very profitable for this brand which is why we just let it run if it was not profitable then i would be looking at the products individually and see which products are driving down the profits if i can identify that then i will just go in and immediately exclude those products but if the overall campaign has been running for 7 14 maybe even 30 days and it's very very unprofitable it might be time to just launch a brand new strategy but i always like to step one look at the overall general overview of how the campaign is doing in the last 14 to the last 30 days ideally i like to look at the, this month's worth of data as a whole so 
this month this campaign has been doing very well while this campaign might not be doing too well so my next step would be to go inside the campaign that's not doing too well and actually look at the actual products and determine which product is crossing my profit margins which product is not crossing my profit margins and base it on the cost of the product and this is where advanced optimization strategies come into play such as ranking by the cost then looking at the overall conversion value over cost looking at the ctrs see if there's any products which are dragging down my campaign ctr and just exclude them or also use Using the BBAC method, which is the bids, budgets, audiences, and key performing indicators method, which I created myself. Bids meaning can you adjust the bids? Budgets meaning can you increase the budgets or should you decrease the budgets? Audiences, should you need to do anything within the audiences and key performing indicators, including products and anything else which is basically a key performance indicator which you need to increase or decrease and of course a lot of these things don't apply for smart shopping like you can't control bids you can control budgets but you can't control audiences and any other key performance indicators really it's just the product section so that's where the back method can really be kind of adjusted and molded around but you want to be implementing that once every seven days that's just generally how i optimize every four to seven days generally but nothing too crazy when it comes to optimization that's exactly what I was doing for these campaigns once it actually launched. But there's a few key learnings which I learned from doing this for these three ad accounts for the past couple of months, which you should also be aware of if you want to go ahead and try something very similar. Key learning number one, all accounts are different. It might work for some, it might not work for others. Out of, I would say about five or six different tests, it only worked for these three accounts. So that means that you should not always count on this to work for you because there are certain things which might just not end up adding up for your account. Like the overall data that you have or profit margins and what i notice is low profit margins like five dollar ten dollar or very very competitive niches like if you're selling sunglasses or if you're selling watches smart shopping campaigns might not necessarily always work the best for you unless you have a lot of data to back that up but it's not always going to work for you always want to keep that in mind and that is my number one learning from this overall endeavor of just testing out smart shopping for testing number two is smart shopping campaign can definitely be a hit or miss and a lot of the times if it's a really really good account that's gonna work with smart shopping you will see results right from day number one but for other accounts if it's just not gonna work it might be off to a very low start or it might not even work at all after seven days or ten days of running smart shopping but this does not mean that if with in one day if you don't get results you're gonna shut off your smart shopping never do that because there's a very good chance day two day three day five even smart shopping might begin to work and it depends on your product it depends on what budget you have set for that smart shopping so don't just go rush into it and just decide for what you want to do with the smart shopping right from the beginning which brings me to point number three and that is always try out search campaigns with smart shopping because search campaigns smart shopping they work hand in hand they feed each other data so if there's only smart shopping running within the account it might be a bit difficult for the account to kind of continuously understand your products understand who to show your ads to etc especially if it's a brand new account which just recently got 50 conversions or it's not even at 50 conversions yet so you want to make sure there's other campaign types running with smart shopping and not just to go all in with smart shopping because yes smart shopping is amazing based on this test i learned using smart shopping for majority of the accounts that i handle but again it's not going to work for brand new accounts or with accounts where there's nothing else running besides smart shopping it's eventually gonna fade out so you want to make sure you're kind of feeding the smart shopping data with other remarketing campaigns search campaigns etc but again, if you're doing $30,000 or more in sales and you want to take your e-commerce brand to the next level, go on to my website at yourremarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how I can help you take your e-commerce brand to the next level. But if you found any type of value in this video, destroy the like button and destroy that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.